That's exactly, um, actually that's not exactly what I did in the wired video. In the wired video, the, the mesh, because it was just a solid plane of ground with, uh, with holes in it, I made a big hole in it and I was, just a, I was just able to probe the bus. I didn't even need to fix the mesh. <clears throat> Today, as we start to shrink, we go lower. That last one was uh, 1.2 micron. Jumping around a little on the size back there. Just to give you some ideas of what I've seen. T today these chips are being, are being, they're all, they're, everything I see today is below 350. It's typically about 220 if I had to average it. Um, some are 90, some are 180, some are 140. It just depends who, who makes it. Um, but it, the principles that I'm describing about the instruction register and stuff still applies today. Even the nail polish attack. Um, I'm going to show you ch some chips that, uh, from Thompson that are 180 nanometers that I, I executed the nail polish attack on. And I stopped early because I ran into a problem with the nail polish coating because of the heat. The heat cracked it and it came off. And so before I, I go too far off topic though, so some of these smart cards and such come out with filler metal. You can see it here. This is TSMC. I believe it's like a 250 nanometer process. I've never really measured it, but it's smaller than 350. And so, actually it may be 350, I'm sorry. It may actually be. Um, so this chip, this is not security. You don't, you don't lay filler metal here that does nothing and, and call it, you know, it's obscurity, I guess. It's obscuring below, but it's, it's by no means a security, uh, you know, enhancement to this design. And if anything, it helps me because when I'm in the fib, I can count. So I can count from the edge and say, okay, I got to go over 18 of these little stubs and then drill. Um, you know, and it gets even better because look here, they, they have these little like, it's, I don't even know if these are alive, but there's like, it came up to the metal three surface and then it like went for a few micrometers and then went down again to metal two. And um, I, I don't know what these little stubs are doing, but um, if they're, you know, I'm assuming they're, they're alive. And so I can measure off these stubs and say, okay, from the stub, count up five, go over 20. Anyway, so um, this is, if you use TSMC in your chip, and you, you tell, you know, they give you this black box of a memory. This is one of their popular memory sizes that I see. I see Freescale using it. This is a, some Chinese smart card uh, that used this one. And uh, you can see fillers everywhere, but there's no mesh. These are, this is the top metal right here. One of these lines might even be important. So I may, need, I may not even need to fib it because if this is 350, I believe it is actually 350. And even if it's 250, I can still hit this track right here. It's by itself. And I can still hit this one right here, and I can probably get to these two because I'm pretty good with the laser. Um, if I, but if I'm skeptical, I'll just go use the fib and open them. It, they'll, these you don't even need to count. You can go right to them. Take an optical picture, go load it in your in your fib. Make sure you're grounded well to your stage, and then um, in five minutes later, you're looking for this wire once you've yeah, leveled yourself. So those not so invisible ROMs. Here's the case, 180 nanometer uh, Samsung smart card. So Samsung has these smart cards that they produce. I don't believe they're common criteria certified or anything. But what's interesting about these smart cards is that, th that they give you a bootloader. You sign an NDA to get the documents. And then you get, they tell you, okay, when you buy the cards from us for whatever, $5 each or some, some price, um, there's a bootloader in ROM. And the, boot, and the ROM also has, you can permanently disable the bootloader and the bootloader also has ROM functionality for like triple DES or RSA, some type of PKI, et cetera. The bad part is the ROM is visible. Now this, I didn't actually stain this. Oliver Kummerling, this was donated from Oliver Kummerling, so I want to give him some credit for this picture. So this, in this picture, he stained this ROM and all the P-type dopings came out. Now what's important about this is they didn't even encrypt the ROM. This is supposed to be a smart card, a brand new smart card fielded today, and yet it's, ROM is in the clear. So I, I don't understand that. Now I linked you to the wrong picture here. Um, I'll show you another picture of this ROM later and you can see clearly where the, where it went, where the ROM bits went to FFs. Now this is an ARM, ARM 9 or an ARM 10 processor. And so um, when the ROM became empty at the end of the ROM, they, be, they were just all ones. And I believe on this ROM, it, yeah, it, it, um, a white spot is a one. So. And, and in the in the sem, this is a sem image. You can clearly it's dark everywhere that it's not that it's not light. So you can see. I mean, it's very easy to detect the bits on this ROM. Then we got baseband processors from cell phones. Anybody do like cell mess with uh, cell phone hacking? 
So all you guys want to always hack the iPhone, and you always want to hack, you know, the BlackBerry and all these other phones. And and the initial way to get to this would be to look at the bootloader ROM first, because a lot of these guys they might run encrypted code today, but a lot of them just had a signature. So they, you know, it's it's signed with RSA one twenty eight and MD five hash. Well, that's great, but what do you do after the signature is checked? Do you ever check it again? So I mean, one one wire, and you can or yourself into a higher area of the flash because the flash has sections that are checked. So how do you know this? You don't have the manuals. Well, you can you can read this ROM just like just like if it was textbook. Um, but I mean, now I, I imaged it in the fib. This is done in a fib, so this is a fib image. But this ROM is not encrypted. If I thought it was, this gave it away that it isn't right here. Because, because if it was encrypted, this wouldn't have been all ones. So that every bit here is basically unprogrammed in the ROM. They could have at least, and, and this is good advice for all of you if you design a, a software, um, or if you design hardware, you know, it's good to think like this. This ROM should have had junk put at the end of it. This ROM should never have had st uh, static ones, and because it did, it's very obvious that it's not encrypted. Well, you you could do it, but because the user software and your bootloader technically would never call it. Be do, you, do you follow me? Okay, so that's what th this gentleman answered the question. He's he. And th th that's a good point because I only see it from one side of the coin. But this gentleman saying that that the trade-off is basically that it, reliability issues in manufacturing. So thank you for clarifying. Understood. Understood. No, that, that's a very good point. So he's saying basically one, one error you might end up executing from this area and it's junk. At least this case, case it's, it's uh, like a NOP or something in the ARM language. So, but you can still, you can read this ROM out like, like, like it was not even, like it was nothing to do. The problem with this chip is it's so small, I think it was like 130 nanometers, it maybe it had been larger than this. Um, it, but no, it was 130 nanometers. The problem with this optically, 1500 mag, 1000 magnification, you can't see it clear enough to really make out the ones and zeros. You can, but it's grainy. It's, it's so, I just imaged it in the fib. This is uh, 5000 magnification. So zoom it in 5000 times and this is, what the, this is what those bits look like. I have no idea the way it's ordered. I just, um, this, uh, this is just to show you guys. So a lot of companies like Atmel are doing meshes. Do you do, anybody here design like this type of uh, security product that has like a meshing over it? They, the mesh is great. The mesh slows me down for about a day. So um, <laughs> once, no, and I mean this sincerely, it, it really does. It, you know, when I talked about the TPM attack, I explained it took me six months. But what everybody didn't understand was that what took me six, it took me two months to actually finish the TPM chip. It took me four months to, to make buffers to, uh, to, um, to sit on, on a 180, um, I'm sorry, 1.8 volt signal without, you know, changing its capacitance so much that it, uh, that it shuts the chip down. The, you know, at 33 megahertz, it's pretty fast to put down a bunch of needles. And um, so, so basically, there were challenges on that and also finding, I had to come up with a way to get around the mesh. But once I came up with this way to get around the mesh, and, and as well as the other the other challenge that I just described, now those apply to any chip today. Now this chip's not that small, but what's neat here is that Atmel went out of their way. This this is from a chip called the Crypto Companion. Anybody heard of that? Atmel Crypto Companion. Okay, it's snake oil, so stay away from it. Um, so it's this chip. Let us do you the cryptography for you. You know, we'll prove to you that they authenticated correctly. Blah 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 blah. I say stay away. That's my my uh, <laughs> humble advice. So anyway, but this mesh is cute. It's very cute. Another company making meshes like this is Renesas. Anybody use Renesas smart cards? If you do, there's a good chance that the mesh looks similar to this. Several circuits. Um, and, and like you can see here at the top of the screen, this 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 is several different circuits. But what the engineers didn't understand that designed this mesh is that I can cut one of these lines at a time and watch them go out and turn black. And this is called voltage contrast. And so as I cut the line, I can see everywhere the line went. Now I may, I will actually have to polish down the, um, the, uh, the die to where the metal's exposed, otherwise the fib won't show me anything. But once I've done that, as soon as that line floats over on one end, it's gonna go darker. 
It's because it's not properly connected up anymore. And you'll see this in a little bit. Uh, okay. Voltage contrast. It can kill you. You think you're, you think, you know, these guys are thinking, ah, we've got it. No problem. Well, <clears throat> they don't really have anything. Because <clears throat> you can see here, this is from the 66. So here, this bit, this line, it's out here, it's out here. Everywhere I marked it in red, the line was out. Now, the 66 mesh, I really like it because it was consistent. So they get an A with me, you know, if I had to rate them. Because even though it's simple to, for me to break now, it wasn't in the beginning because this mesh covers the entire substrate except the bond pad area and, it, it, and they're very tight line spacing and it's consistent. NXP, Atmel, ST, ST, I can't even count them and you'll see why soon. Um, but N, NXP and Atmel's meshes are, are not as consistent as this is. So, in conclusion, you know, like security is always going to be constantly evolving. I took you from the early 80s into today and nothing's really secure. You know, I mean, like there's gentlemen here that like the gentleman that designs chips, he may learn something today, he may not learn something today. I, I don't know, but for one thing, he'll think twice before he does his next layout. And so this is good because if you're using a chip from a company, you need to learn, you, the, the user needs to trust the vendor, but it's kind of hard to trust the vendor when you're not really sure what's inside. And I've made a lot of people angry in the industry, but I've also made a lot of people happy um, because the, the manufacturers, like Infineon probably hates me today because of the TPM break. And I didn't mean to do, to do it to them in that way, but, but um, it was important to get that out to the public that, you know, it's not as secure as you think it is. Who here uses an Aladdin E-Token? Nobody uses an Aladdin E-Token Pro? Aladdin E-Token Pro runs on something called the Card OS. Anybody here use Card OS? Your application is stored in the EEPROM under the default key. You do? No? So the default key. So basically, it's a 66 that has a possibility of having some random key into the EEPROM to, for the encryption of the EEPROM. The ROM is encrypted with a random key per mask, and the, the static RAM is, is encrypted with a, with a random key on, that's chosen the, fir the first time it's serialized. Long story short, the, Siemens writes a card OS uh, operating system that, that doesn't even take advantage of this, this nice 64-bit uh, X key, which even if it is in a way snake oil, it's, if, if it's there, use it. And they didn't, they didn't use it. So buyer beware, you should be careful because the pin is in the clear on, the, on those uh, eToken pros. So do me a favor and, and fill out the comment card like I was saying. So who wants to see some porn? Yeah? Come on. Get here. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so. Okay, now you gotta bear with me because I mean we'll get much better chip pick images this way. So I'll start with Atmel. I have a whole drive of, of, um, of images here. I mean I've, uh, I have every, I have let everybody, I don't you know, even know who to start with. Um, this is 100 gigs but we'll start with what I planned for the, for the talk. So we'll do Atmel first. Um, these are in no, no specific order really. Um, so the Atmel Security VR, it looks like this. Now this is a mesh that gives the appearance that it, that it might be what I call three-dimensional. And so when I, what I, the reason I call it three-dimensional is because the, the mesh begins on, for example, hypothetically metal four, and then it, and it goes under to metal three, and then comes back up somewhere else on metal four again, doing kind of a lane shift. And, but then it's static down the center. So Atmel missed something very important on this design. Well, one, one thing that I should mention is it's not a 3D mesh because the mesh actually doesn't go up and down. It changes the size and the thickness of the track. And that's why you get this effect over here in the corner where it looks like, it's, it looks like something's changed. But if I zoom in on the, on the next image, which is just the very top row at a little higher power, you'll see that, that really this is just these, there's actually an error here, but these are these wires that just, came over and then came down and got thicker. So, and they give, the, they give the appearance of being some type of an arrow. It, so it gives a really cool look, but it's more of an obscurity technique than anything else. Because as soon as you strip this with some hydrofluoric acid, you strip off the top metal, you can leave the trowel where, in the glass and the oxide where the, metal le, where the metal lived. And so you can follow over where the track went anyway with it missing. And Atmel and most of these mesh companies miss the, miss the fact that I'm not gonna remove the entire mesh. I'm going to remove a piece of the mesh as I described in the TPM attack. So I'm going to find where the instruction latches are and then I'm going to 
you know, figure out, okay, it's 100 microns over and it's 140 microns up in the chip. 